friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter two talking about the test management and finally moving into this longest chapter's last topic that is 2.9 managing the application of industry standards. As a part of this tutorial, we will be mainly insisting and understanding more about the industry standards which can be relevant to testing and being made use of that because uh, there are several standards which we have been learning about since foundation. In both the foundation as well as advanced level syllabuses, you do have references which are made to number of standards like ISO, IEEE and all. So being aware of all these uh, standards as a test manager, it is very crucial. Because I'm a test manager basically gets aware of what kind of standards the project is going to make use of. And these standards can be related to many things within your project. It could be associated with your templates. It, is, it could be helpful in deriving the test cases. Or it could be possible to determine some of the validation rules from the standards or limitations and tolerances for the safety critical devices. So there are a lot of a different number of factors which can be considered in order to determine that what standards are applicable and there are many of them which are dependent on certain factors as well within your project and that's what we will be understanding today in this particular tutorial in more detail so test managers should be aware of standards their organization's policy on the use of standards and whether or not the standards are required necessary or useful to use them now, of course, uh, it, it is test manager responsibility to determine or being aware of like whether the organization is uh, dependent on certain standards or not, if in case it is relevant for the project or not. In case you do not have any standards being utilized, but you do have a project where you think being a test manager that certain standards are really important to be adhering to, then make sure that you make sure you have implemented those standards and rolled out within the organization. And also let your team know that these standards will be followed for certain activities or process initiation. Well, what are these standards come from? Like where exactly we can derive these standards from and what are the sources of that? So of course, standards can come from different sources. For example, international or with international objectives. Uh, national such as national applications of international standards or domain specific standards such as when international or national standards are adapted to particular domains or developed for specific domains. So of course you might be getting an idea if your, your organization does make you of all these uh, standards you do understand what we are talking about but just for the people who don't know what exactly the standards are if in case you're talking about automotive you do have a lot of standards to be followed if you talk about a safety critical device you talk about your mobile phone, you talk about laptops, any electronic gadgets, IoT, or even if you talk about electronic appliances, home appliances, these all have certain standards to be followed. Even if it comes to a software, not only just hardware, if you talk about banking applications, security devices, or you talk about the firewalls, APIs, there are so many things which might be related to healthcare devices or embedded systems does make you of the use of certain standards which are applicable to determine why do we need these standards? That's the very first question. The standards are basically going to tell you that it's it's probably a national standard that within a particular country this is going to be the same that means no matter which part of your country you buy this product you really understand or really you uh, be you are aware of that how this product will function what will be the dimensions of it and what exactly will be the features of that so you can now see a pattern among different products like laptops or cell phones or home appliances and so many other things Similarly, when it comes to healthcare devices, there are certain you know, parameters which we need to adhere to, like for example, BP monitor, weighing scale, or even if you talk about you know, the ventilators or different devices which you have in medical equipments, you do know that there are certain parameters to be taken care of. You just can't show a particular BP monitor reading, that is blood pressure monitor reading as 29 instead of 30 right so we need to stick to a lot of such things and that's where the standards are important for and uh, it does come from different sources like national or internationally agreed upon and then you determine if your product is falling under some, any of these uh, standards then do you do make use of them now we're just giving you quick examples of some of these standards like we're coming from the international standard bodies like iso and ieee now iso basically stands for international standard organization 
or a lot of organization also call it as interna uh, international organization for standardization but actually it is ios pronounced as uh, you know iso but it was initially declared as international organization for standardization it is made up of members representing for their country the natural body uh, most relevant to the area being standardized so we may have standardization for any product could be anything what you make maybe a pressure cooker or you're talking about a gas stove or maybe a chimney or something you may have you know any any such product which fall under this category on can make use of standards so they basically have elaborated uh, different uh, you know layers for different products and they have well determined international standards so if you're using a product which is iso certified that means it is internationally acceptable at the same time if you talk about the other option that is ieee which basically stands for institute of electrical and electronics engineers now that's what the name itself suggests to you that what kind of standards we will have here of course a professional organization based in the us but the national representatives in more than 100 countries that means they have their presence working on these standards more than 100 countries across the globe and this organization has proposed a number of standards that are useful for software testers specifically so if you remember from your foundation level in fact in advanced syllabus you would find that a lot of templates for test plan, test cases, test uh, execution logs, or defect report, test execution report, you will find a standard template available at IEEE 829. And you can always go online and refer to their official website to see that what is the standard template as per IEEE. So I'm referring to one of the common standard that is 829 and second is 1028, which helps you to you know, assist you with the test related documentation and processes. So that's a few of the things which you need to take care of, but that's not all. Of course, we do have more. To further continue and talk about more of these standards, of course, many countries have their own national standards as well. Like in case you're talking about India, you have ISI, that is Indian Institute of Standardization, but again, uh, notated as ISI, but pronounced as Indian Institute of Standardization. We have BIS, which is Bureau of in Indian Standards. So, you know, you, these are specific to the country. Similarly, many countries have their own national standards. Some of these standards are useful for software testing as well. One example is the UK standard that is BS, BS 79252, which is business standards. And uh, that uh, provides uh, information related to many of the test design techniques described in the advanced level uh, certification of test analyst and technical test analyst. We don't have techniques in test manager. That's the reason they're referring it to, but you know a few of them right from the foundation. Some standards are specific to particular domains. Like, you know, it's not about the process. It's not about the template. It's about domain, like automobile, automotive, or you talk about elevators, or you talk about banking, you talk about medical electronics. These are domain specific. Or even if you talk about aviations, the aircrafts, they are domain specific standards. That means Boeing 787 has to follow a certain standard no matter what type of model I'm making or what kind of aircraft I'm making, what kind of interior I have. But when it comes to the technical configurations and technical standards of the aircraft, it has to follow the domain specific standards. So that it's just not, just not that the way you want it, you can create a 787 model of Boeing. So Boeing internally has different models of their aircraft and they have all the models to be followed through that standards. So these are, these are the things which we are trying to understand about from the domain and some of these standards have implications for software testing, software quality and software development. For example, in avionics domain, the US Federal Aviation Administration standard that is DO178B it is uh, EU equivalent ED-12B, applies to software used in civil, a, civil aircrafts. This standard describes certain level of structural coverage criteria based on the level of criticality of the software being tested. Similarly, another example of the domain-specific standard is found in a medical system uh, with the US Food and Drug Administration, titled as 21 CFR part number 820 FDA-21. This standard recommends certain structural and functional test techniques 
for the medical system. So now you see that, you know, you're getting some idea that standards are just not related to process or template. Sometimes it can be domain specific, you know, specific to particular product that what kind of radiations you must have. And this board or this standard organization will evaluate your product before giving that uh, authentication. I'm not sure how many of you have seen the, you know, the backside of your cell phone when you remove a battery from your cell. Nowadays, you don't have the authorization to remove the battery of the product because of tampering and other things but if in case you had any time access to remove your back panel and remove your battery you see a lot of you know approvals behind that there are a lot of logos simple logos so these logos come from all these standard organization that we have approved this from the point of radiation we have approved this from the point of battery usage or we have approved this from the point of the usage of sensors and you know a lot of many other things so this is uh, you know usage it is available to use for public that is safe so there are a lot of the such things we will be passing through so whenever you make use of any standard from an standard organization they will have to evaluate your product to give them a you know quality check okay so there are three other important examples as well like pmi pm uh, prince 2 and itl pmi and prince 2 are commonly used project management frameworks in North America and Europe, but now I think it is available globally. ITIL is a framework for ensuring that an IT group delivers valuable services to the organization in which it exists. So this is more from the point of, you know, service, uh, service, customer service desk management. And uh, when you handle a lot of calls from your customer and you try to make sure that you respond to all of them on time or probably before time, whatever the standards or methodology are being adopted. It is very important to remember that they are created by the groups of professionals. Standards reflect the source group's collective experience and wisdom, but also their weaknesses too. So the test manager should be aware of the standards that apply to their environment and context, whether formal standards like international, national, or domain specific, or in-house standards and recommend practices. Now, it's sometimes possible that there are standards which are not coming from a formal you know, organization standards. Then if in case you are making use of any of the in-house standards, then you need to make sure that what will be the practices, what will be the guidelines which your team and organization has to follow strictly to meet those specifications. Anyways, that was a quick uh, topic to talk about standards. And yes, you will be expecting at least a question from this particular chapter as well. But this question will be quite straightforward, not a scenario based uh, specific. That means they won't give you a scenario. Rather, they will just ask you about a few of these uh, so, you know, standards that what exactly the standard is applicable for. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else with you, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.